I've been thinking about Hope Hicks's testimony in Donald Trump's trial, the 11th day of this criminal trial. Uh, election interference, hush money. It's important that we don't just call it the hush money trial, as there's a whole lot more to it than that. But what she effectively said, she's the former communications chief for, for Donald Trump and the Trump administration. She actually ended up bolstering a key part of the prosecutor's case that Donald Trump himself was the source of the $130,000 paid to Stormy Daniels when she cast doubt on the description relayed to her by Donald Trump himself that his former lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen, had simply paid Daniels out of selflessness. Prosecutors asked on direct examination what Hicks thought of that account. That would be out of character for Michael. She said, I didn't know him to be an especially selfless person. He was the kind of person to, to seek credit. Well, the point that she makes essentially discredits Donald Trump's contention that the entire hush money scheme was orchestrated by Michael Cohen and, and Trump was removed from the operation. And, you know, we kind of knew this already. But what Hope Hicks is doing is providing a, a second win for prosecutors. She's revealed that Donald Trump had some knowledge about the hush money scheme directly. And under cross-examination by Trump's lawyer, Hope Hicks also said that Cohen had juvenile tendencies and that he often inserted himself into the Trump 2016 campaign unsolicited, even though he had no formal role within the campaign, which had its own lawyers. She was then asked in a series of quick-fire questions if Michael Cohen took unauthorised actions if Cohen ever went rogue or if Cohen sometimes did things that were unhelpful. He liked to call himself Fixer or Mr. Fixit, and it was only because he first broke it, she said. In suggesting that Michael Cohen sometimes acted unilaterally, Hope Hicks opened the door to Trump's team to lean in to their contention that Trump was removed from the catch-and-kill schemes and it was Cohen freelancing his way through the operation. So there are some pros and cons to Hope Hicks's testimony. In one way, she's saying that Donald Trump was there at the centre of the action, that he knew exactly what this $130,000 was for, the hush money to pay off the porn star Stormy Daniels. But at the same time, she's also suggesting that Michael Cohen often went rogue and that he himself was somebody who liked to be in the, in the centre of the action and inserted himself into the 2016 presidential campaign. So I was thinking that, you know, Jenna Ellis did a similar thing, didn't she, when she was a co-conspirator in the election fraud uh, case. Uh, and that was that she confessed. She confessed and she apologised. And we've seen the same with Cassidy Hutchinson, who also felt this great sense of sadness for what she had been involved with. In, in the White House as an assistant to Mark Meadows and, again, being in the room where it happened. But most interestingly is Michael Cohen, who is somebody who has completely recognised his involvement, he regrets it, and he has turned the ship around now, going straight, as it were, and now being the one to really expose Donald Trump and the Trump organization and the Trump campaign for what it really was. And the point that I want to make here is that it is possible for people to change. And it's possible for people who are brainwashed by the cult of Trump, whether they be working for him directly or indirectly or even just supporters, to actually see the light and to recognize that you don't have to live in this parallel universe, this twilight zone of, of Trump worship, and that to worship one solitary man is not democracy, that is not the freedom that we enjoy here in the United States, and that leaders come and go and the country is ultimately what is most important. And in the same way that Democrats don't worship Joe Biden, they worship the notion of democracy and the democratic system, and the fact that he might be the, the torchbearer right now, but you don't see people worshipping Joe Biden. In fact, some are openly critical of him, but they still recognise that he is not a danger to democracy. He is a, a, a safe pair of hands. 
And and I think that a lot of these MAGA Republicans now, one by one, as the as the house of cards starts to fall for Donald Trump, and as these legal cases expose the lengths to which he went to, to, I mean, as we've heard from David Pecker's testimony, you know, putting out stories about about Hillary Clinton being ill and and the types of things that are direct election interference, that. You know, there is the opportunity for people who have done wrong to turn the page and, and come clean and do right. And I think it's our job and everybody's job to welcome their testimony and to offer them a soft place to land. I'm Anthony Davis. You can hear me on the 5 Minute News podcast. You can catch me co-hosting Uncovered and on Sunday on The Weekend Show with Midas Touch.